mentioned that uh, most of times they would they would like to monitor the substantial number of products and uh, this one by projects programs and so forth as we can see in this view here on to the data entry side you can see that uh, we have this large for for only malaria in trend management but here of course they have the stock at start of month and what they are received and so forth what they consumed but as you can see here we don't have like the reason of losses and the reason of why they have stock low or stock out so that is something so we need to fix to with our application so we design uh, this application we call the LMIS, which is uh, fully integrated to the DHS2. The, it is using the application is using the the, the powerful of the DHS2 to manage uh, the product and uh, so forth. So let me execute the application. Okay, so when you load the application, you can see here we have some kind of dashboard where we can have a quick information about the stock out status, uh, stock out the risk of stock out, the overstock status, and uh, what is the product which uh, they use, or the national team or this system use for period. But we can come back on that uh, situation of dashboard after. With our application, not only we have the dashboard, but we have the way to manage the product. So here we have the ability to add a lot of product we want. It's not because we can say that the country can start with 10 products for this project, but during the period, during the years, they can say that we want to add some kind of product again. So they have this ability to hide it by there. So we can come back again on that if you want. And after that, we have the data entry. Not only the data entry, why we are not using the data entry from the HS2? Because here we try to customize a lot about how to make this data entry because we don't want to have this large of for the form, but we want the people or the, the person at the health facilities when they come, they can come, they can come to the data entry side, they can choose the product which for which they have the move of stock. Okay, let's say that I want to enter the data for uh, this facility. So I choose the facility. I can select, as you can see here, we have one form we call LMS for all products, or we have some kind of form based on programs or based on the based on projects. So we can add a lot of that. We can see that after on the, pro, the configuration side after. So let's say that I want to enter the data for LMS malaria. So I choose the form. I select the period for which I want to enter the data. Okay, so if there is actually the data into the system, it will be loaded for the products for only those we have information. So if I want to say that I want to enter the data for September, the last month, I can come here and select it. So now, what it is will be we can do here? It is to say that in this month, or it is for the last month, I have only I have only used this product. So I select the product, and uh, I will have this other form where we can see the start balance, the country, the quantity we received, the, the, the total if there is transfer in and the transfer out so we can fill the data for that and so forth so if there is another project i can come here and select it again so let's say that we want to check 
what kind of data we receive for this one. So I can, you can see here the start balance automatically show the data from the last month physical inventory. So the system have this ability to take this last month value to bring it at the start of this balance. So you can enter anything here. So that one so is to very, very to manage the data quality issues also. So let's say that for this month, we receive 100 products. The system will automatically show you what is uh, the total you have actually at the start. And if during the, the month you share or you give some kind of a product or some value to another facility, so you can put it uh, here. Let's say that uh, I transfer 23 to another facility, so the total will calculate it for you. But if we have in situation that uh, me also I received for the same pro product from another facility, so I can I can put it here. So the system will show me the quantity already. So now I have the ability to feel the quantity consumed. So let's say that uh, I consumed 50. Okay. But for the losses, we have to fill the data for the real reason that we have those losses. So if there is like a product expired, we need to very, very feel what kind of value or what kind of quantity we have as expired. If there is damage, we can feel it also. Okay. So the other reason was given by the, the countries because they are said that they have sometimes a terrorism reason for those. They have losses of product because with terrorism, some kind of people can go there and sell products. And they want to follow that. That's why we add it. Okay. So after that, we can check how many days we have stock out. I think here we didn't have stock out, so we can move on. The system automatically show us uh, what is the adjusted uh, consumption. So let's say that for this period, maybe I consumed all. Okay, I know that there is something. So if there is error, the system will show us for us also. So let me say I consumed uh, 100. And there is what there was damage four and five. Okay. And for days of stock, maybe it was the day of stock, so I can put four there. The system automatically will show me the adjust uh, quantity consumed based on the day of stock. Okay. But also it will show me the reason that why I have this of stock. So when I click on it, I can say that for the stock out, we have those reasons, expired or something, a delay of delivery. And the system also can calculate automatically the average month of stock, the average month of consumption. And this one is based on the last three months of consumption. And finally, the system can show you the theoretical end balance, but you have this ability to fill the physical inventory because this one will be the theoretical one, but what you have really in, on your hand, so you need to fill it. So let's say that I have only 18. And the system will show you what is the gap. And for this gap, you have to fill the reason why we have those gaps also. So maybe it is because of... Uh, you loan, uh, you have a ring or something like uh, there is issues with uh, physical inventory. So you can, it is a uh, multiple, multiple select. So you can choose all the reason you want uh, for why you have this gap. And the, finally, the system also will provide you the quantity you can order. This one, it is a proposition, but if you yourself, you want to feel that uh, even this one, it is why the system or the DHS2, it is provided to me. I want to, I want really 20, 50, 
of uh, the order. So this one is adjusted order. And you have to fill also the reason why you have uh, this adjustment. Okay, maybe it is a calculation error if you want. Okay, you can do that. Right. So you can see here now we have the last project product we just fill information. And if you want, we can add some of those again and again and again. Okay. So this one was the how we fill the data for the monthly reports. But mind that not only we have the monthly reports, we have also the supply. So let's say that uh, this facility just requested the 215 quantity of uh, this product. Now the supply will be entered by the district to form one at the district side, but you will have ability to have access to this facility. So I'm connected at super user. That is why I can see the both option. But if we share well the user for each situation, the first one will see only the report and the other one will see the supply. Okay. So let's go to the supply side. And this situation, let's say that we have in October. So the last quantity for the last month, this facility order for this product will be here. And now the, the person at the, the store level at the district will come to the same facility and say that for this order, we have only this one we, we can give to you. Okay, you can feel it. And for that why that reason also, if the, uh, it is a, an unstacify order, you will have this pop-up also to fail why you cannot satisfy or satisfy this order. So if it is a financial reason or stock out reason, we can feel it also and so forth. So here you can, you can only have the product for which there is, there was the order and you can make the distribution situation. Okay. So, there is something I need you guys to mind also with uh, this application is that we have this ability also to monitor the, the stores at the district level, at the regional level also. So the same forms, okay, can be used at different level. Okay, each level has their own management system. So with the same form, they can say that uh, for us at the district level, okay, for the malaria, we have this start of balance that's a quantity received and so forth. So we can fill data for all level into the system. The aggregation will be made by analysis side. Okay, so there is something I want to show you again is the project management side, okay? So let's say that uh, during the work, you have new product you need to add into your system, okay? So you can come to the product management and now here you can fill a new product like uh, zinc sulfate uh, 20. And you need to also see that uh, this product will be part of uh, this project or this program. So let's say that the zinc sulfate will be part of the product essential. And if it is a seasonal product, you can check here why we are talking about seasonal. The seasonal option will give you this ability to better monitor the average month of consumption. The calculation will not be the same. If we check that it is a seasonal product, the average month uh, of consumption will be calculated taking in account the last three months of this year, but also the last three months of the same, the, the same three months for the last year. So it will take account two years to, to give us the really, 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 really information of average month of consumption. 
Okay, that is why. So this one be will be fine for malaria product because with malaria product we need, we know that there is a seasonal things for that. Okay. So now we can click on save. The system will create all information related to the, this product, the, the, the indicators, the, the elements, the sharing groups and the data set and so forth. Okay. So let me reload. So we can see that now we have this product here and we can see that when we will go to the data entry side, we will have the same product into the system and so forth. Okay, so before talking about analysis, the fact is uh, we do here the data entry for the monthly report and supply, but we have the way to monitor also the emergency order. But to do that, we use the tracker directly. So we need to use the powerful of the DHS2. So for that, I can come here. So we have some tracker we call emergency supply. Okay, so I can go to, to select uh, one facility. And uh, I can add a register. So normally based on countries, uh, policies, they can say that we have automatical ID identification for that. So, but here we let it uh, to be put manually because of uh, in Burkina and Mali, they, are not, they, they don't have the same situation. Okay. And here we have the first stage, we will be the, the, the order when the second one will be the supply. So let's say that uh, for the, 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 the other, we have this ability to, to automatically assign the, the user who has to follow this new order we want to do. And we will have it here the list of the products we have into our system. So let's say that for the paracetamol 1500, we want to order 400, okay, for, for amoxicillin, we need to, we want to order 33, 34 and so forth. So we can do that until the end and click on complete. Normally the system will send automatically an email to LMIS group that someone request the emergency order. And uh, the guys at the store side can come to the supply side fill the dates and here they will have only the product for which we order we, we want uh, we request an emergency order and as you can see on this view when you come here you will see that we have what is uh, the, the the quantity requested and uh, the guys at the store can feel that uh, they have only 300, the, the notification will be still there until he said that it gave the real value for which he want to, 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 to provide data for this facility and so forth. Okay. And if it is, if everything is good, you can click on the complete and send. Okay. That is uh, what we done for the emergency supply. So let's come back now at uh, the analysis side. So for the analysis side, what have we done? We want people when they come to know what, uh, how many products are in situation of stock out, how many products are in situation of a risk of stock out and so forth. But let's say that I want to monitor the malaria product, okay? I want to see this information for March, uh, for July, if I want. I want to see the situation for 
a regional specifically, but also I want to see this information by this level. So this level allow us to know that we want to monitor the information by uh, the stores or by uh, the point of uh, sale. So let's say that uh, I want to see the situation of health facilities for this region. So when we, we came, come back to our data, the dashboard based on the filters we select here, the 93 we see here is not how the product in stock out, but it is the situation of the product and the facilities which where we have the stock out situation. So you can click on it and uh, to check uh, what is the, the view. So as you can see here, we have the same products, but not for the same facility because we want to know that where we have this situation of stock out also. So that is why we have this 93. But if we want to know how many products is in stock out based on those ones, so it is only 12, and how many organization units in stock out based on our filters. So here we have 31 organization units. What kind of, it is 13% of all facilities in this region. So that is the same things we have here. So here we have uh, this situation for risk of stock out and we have here five, uh, 12 uh, overstock st statue. And finally, we can know that uh, also for based on our selection, our filters, how many products have uh, information about stock in during this period, okay? And also if we have emergency order, it will show us the numbers, okay? So note that uh, we can uh, print this situation also. Okay. So after that, we have the completeness and timeliness uh, situation based on the last 12 months, based on the, the month you select here. So if uh, I choose that to select September, automatically it will show me the last 12 months based on the September. So I can have a good view of that. We have after a situation of uh, the consumption and the average month of this uh, average month of consumptions. When you come here, you have the quantity consumed, the physical inventory, so you can you know that uh, you can uh, hide some kind of legend to more check uh, the data. So you can know that what is uh, the trend between the both information. Okay. After that, also you have uh, the situation on losses, but uh, the reason of those losses, those losses. So you can say that uh, what is uh, the most reason of losses, as you can see here. Okay, you have the situation also about the stock out, the, the, the how many sites are, are in stock out and the reason the most reason the facility or the points chose for for the, the, the stock out. And that will be the same thing for the adjustments, the other adjustments and the, the gap also. And the finally, you can have a good view of all the, 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 the month of stock available per product and the by site, by organization units. So, this legend is based on what uh, will we make it in the configuration. So if it is on one product or one month, it is good or not and so forth. Okay. So note that all that it is uh, managed into the DHS2 side. Okay. So the next report we want to talk about because we have a lot of here will be the stock of statue at different level. Since in, into our system, we have this ability to enter the data for each level into the system. That will be nice also to know that what is the situation for each level, of course. So for here, I can say that I want to see 
the situation about uh, Kenin. Okay. So when you come here, you can see that uh, the yellow one are uh, the situation of these products at the district side, at the district level, when the red one is for health facility. So if you want, you can select. I want to see what is the situation at the district level only. Uh, I want to see the both situation of the availability of this product, uh, not only the health facility, but the district level also. You can choose a lot of product and compare them if you want. Okay. The second um, trend, the second graphic, it is uh, the same situation, the same layout, but now for the average month for, of the stock. So this one can really give you a good view to take uh, action quickly. Okay. And uh, we have the consumption trend if we want. Okay. So for here also, you can select products. Okay. So you can see the trend of all the product based on your selection. Okay. So here also, not only you have the, the view of uh, visualization, this visualization, but you have uh, the pivot table also based on that. Now you, here you can see that it is the cumul, it is the aggregation of all Burkina Faso. But if you want, you can see that you want to see for only for this rate also for, okay, so it will display you based on that quickly. So something we need to talk is uh, the stock uh, statue. So here, we can say that we need to monitor the amoxicillin. Okay, in March 2020. Okay, so you can see that we want to see that for the Burkina Faso. So now we can see that uh, we have. Uh, the, the green one will be, will be the overstock, the yellow, what is normal, and the red one, the, the stock out and so forth. Okay, sorry for the last rejection. I think this one is still remaining in French, so I, we can fix that after, because we have the both language into this app. And what is nice is uh, we have ability also to say the same, based on the same filter, Okay. Okay, just wait. So based on what we have is here with uh, in Camembert, we have the same situation into pivot table. Okay, with uh, the same legend. You can see that because we select all facilities uh, in Burkina Faso, so we have this large view, but uh, in our system, we, we have, we can minus the display. So here it is restrained based on this situation of uh, statue of so stock out, stock. So we have the overstock, what is normal, the stock and the risk of a stock out, okay, in trend. But the last thing is that we have the map also. So in the map, based on our selection in the filter, it will show us uh, the situation of all those facilities for which we select in here, we have the legend going with that. So mind that's uh, all what we done. It is based on the configuration. Since uh, we will not have the same check-in of uh, stock at the different level. So it is here we select that for district. The situation of a stock will use two for minus, five for max, and so forth. 
and the report when the, the reporting will be quarterly when the, the facility will be monthly, but the region can be six monthly. So that is something that we can make by, uh, by configuration. There is another configuration here because uh, the system will be create data, metadata into the system. So we can, uh, our system say that uh, we need all the metadata to create by this prefix and so forth. So we have something to, and the system will be full up with something like that. Uh, it is possible to do with that. Now, not only we finish with this app, but users can know that that they can use what we display here directly with uh, the DHS2 dashboard itself. Since the, all the metadata is created in, into the DHS2, so they can come and add their own board here if they want. But if the only limit here is that they can't, they have to do it by products, but they can come to the filter and set the part of the, the product to automatically load the item of this dashboard. Okay. That is fine. So as examples, we have this ability also to show the trend of this map, which is uh, the situation based on the last month uh, of uh, the artisanal uh, stock. So we can see the same view I show you at the upside at here. Okay. Since I uh, will not have a mouse of time, but because I think uh, we have 10 minutes again, right? Yeah, 10 minutes. Okay. So let's say that uh, we develop also Android app uh, because uh, offline thing is, uh, it is very, very, very necessary. So to deal with that, uh, maybe I need to share another screen. One minute. Okay. Oh. Okay. It's fine, just one minute uh, to show. Okay. So there is another app uh, we call the uh, LMIS here. So we need to put your URL username and password. We have another situation into for the security students in it also. Sorry. Okay, so here we have this way to do the same thing we do with the website. So you have all those data sets. You can come here and select the period. Okay. You can select the product and you will see the same things based on uh, what we have at the start of month. Sorry, this one is still in French when we are working on the translate also. Okay. Okay, what we consume. If there is transfer in transfer out or something like that, we can pull it, losses and so forth. Until the end, you can put the physical inventory. So let's say that we have a, a 50, 50. You have the both for information of reason, sorry. Okay, so, and uh, let's say that I have uh, my inventory, my physical inventory at 50. 
when I change the period because I still on in October. So let's say that I will be in November now. Selecting uh, the same product, the system, the, the, the application will show me for the start balance, the last value of a physical inventory I put. And uh, I can still uh, make in my data entry at the end and I can store it or I can click on sync to quickly send it to the, to the, to the website, to the server. So for the application, Android application, it is only the data entry things we've done here. We didn't do any analysis things. So for analysis things, we have to come to the, to the DHS2 itself to do that. Okay. So I think uh, it is, uh, I don't know, Clement, if I forgot something. No, I think it's good. Very good presentation. Okay, that's fine. So, Scott, if uh, there is uh, some question, so if not, uh, it is okay for us for the demonstration of uh, Burkina Faso LMIS app uh, they want to use. Thank you. Uh Awesome. Thank you so much, Sakibu. That was a wonderful presentation. Uh, quite a lot of people were also very impressed looking at the Slack channel. Um, so very much appreciated that. Um, just a real quick question. There are, there are actually quite a few questions from the community uh, here on Slack. If you do have a question, please type that question. We have about um, 10 minutes or so, maybe a little longer for um, Sakibu and Clement to answer those questions. But also keep in mind that they will stay um, around for the experts lounge on Slack as well. So please post your questions to the experts lounge if you'd like to go into more detail. But just a few questions to get us started, um, Sakibu and Clement, if you don't mind. If a country wanted to use this app or a project wanted to use this app, how do they go about doing that? How do they contact you or, or work with you for this? Uh, if uh, a country wants to use this app, I think uh, it can just send out uh, us a mail or contact us. It is easy. Just contact Dr. Eden and it will be done. Okay, so but this is something that other countries could use if they wanted to. Yes. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> Excellent, great. And that's one of the really wonderful things about DHIS2 is that you're not just, when you start using DHIS2, you're not just using the apps that are developed here at the University of Oslo. You're actually able to utilize and benefit from all of the apps developed from all around the world by you know, great teams like His West Africa uh, that, 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 that makes some fantastic apps that solve some real problems as you've seen here. So it's one of the best things about DHS2 as a platform is that you're actually able to utilize what the whole world is doing, not just, ju not just what we're doing here in Oslo. All right, a few more questions. Um, so George is asking, is there any documentation available on the app? Have you written any kind of guidance or guidelines for the application? Yes, actually we are editing the guideline, the, the document, but uh, we still on it. We have to translate it in English too. So we are working on it actually. Okay, the great. The fact so that... is uh, we start uh, doing this job with uh, two French countries. So we try it very, very much uh, since we know that uh, there will be most of countries, uh, English countries also we can want it. So there will be the first thing is to translate the application itself, that which is done actually. Now we can work on the documentation and uh, so forth. Well, thank you. Okay, great. Um, are the apps available on GitHub? Are they open source? Can, can other people look at the code? <laughs> Actually, it's not uh, open to the GitHub. It is uh, still in internal team. But uh, we are thinking about that. Uh, we will take care of that, of course. Right, yeah. I think with the, to make it clear, with the DHIS2 licensing, it does it encourage app developers to share their apps on GitHub and to make them open source, but it's not necessarily required either. Yeah, um, okay. So, but I just, um, sorry, do you have something to say? 
Yes. I forgot to share with you guys uh, some kind of uh, dispensation, but uh, it's not. Uh, it is like uh, we can still track the the data is uh, based on per, uh, based on patient. So this track also is still there where we can have the profile things and so forth. So it will be the same things, but uh, behind, based on what is the dispensing to the patient, the system will be make uh, a predictor behind which one we have also and uh, to fill it directly to the aggregate side. Okay, so. Yes. Okay. Um, great. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, a few more questions. Um, a question from Liberia. They're asking, how, what do you use to calculate the resupply quantities? What are the values that are used to calculate the, the resupply values that you have there? On uh, inertial consumption. So we just. Uh, a estimate uh, if the product will be in out of stock or not. And then according to the monthly consumption, we can say that maybe the facility needs to have a, a supply for three months or six months, depend on the setting we have chosen. Okay, that's actually it is, it is based on five months in our application. So, but it is uh, still uh, configurable. So that's what I see spoken. It's fine. Okay. Um, is there have do you have any issues with the um, cancellation of zeros problem for any of the indicators? And I think what they mean by that is that it sometimes in supply chains, if you have like zero, if you have a if you have a prolonged stock out, so your stock is zero, your consumption becomes zero, and then all of your indicators can go to zero. Do you have that problem with this application? And if you do, how do you address it? Uh, about zero, but maybe I can take the example with the monthly consumption. Uh, the way we calculate the monthly consumption, we take the last three, the six period, which have values. This means if uh, for the three months we have to value, we will check uh, for the last uh, fourth of five or six months and get the data there to calculate the monthly consumption. Then we can uh, put it as a starting balance according to what is reported in the past. I don't know if okay. I answered the question. Yeah, no, that's interesting. That's an interesting um, way of doing it. Some um, other countries will have like a minimal stock threshold that they have for each fac facility. Um, but th that, would, that would be then input as the resupply value, whereas it sounds like you are uh, looking at, um, uh, you know, going back until there was a, a stock value that had been entered. Exactly. Great. Um, so another question, how will the emergency stock ordered through the tracker be reflected in the aggregate uh, module stocks? Yes. Actually, since uh, we are dealing with uh, aggregating tracker scenes, okay? Okay, so I can let uh, them talk about that. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, okay. Thank you. I mean, uh, I... Oops. It was about the... the sorry, question. sorry, Adam. Adam, sorry. I, could you start over? I, we've been, I was struggling with the mute and unmute button. So sorry, just go ahead and start over if you don't mind. Okay. So I said I raised my hand uh, a while ago uh, when uh, you asked the question about uh, how refilling is calculated and uh, how to deal with uh, average monthly consumption. Uh, the way we do it here is that uh, we use the, the minimum stock as a reference. So the stock to reorder will be calculated based on what is needed to get at least the minimum uh, stock, which is the, the threshold we are talking about. And for the zero uh, values, as Kemal said, 
the app is looking for. I mean, if uh, usually we use the past three months for to calculate the average monthly consumption. But then if for the past three months there's no data and it's only zero, 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 then the same will move, move backward to the fourth, fifth, sixth month until uh, to get data and calculate the, the average monthly consumption. So that's what I wanted to say. Over. Great. No, th thank you, Adam. It makes, makes it a lot more clear. Um, some Still some questions coming in. Quite a popular presentation, so <laughs> lots of questions. Um, and a reminder, everyone, that we they, we do, we're, we're lucky enough to have Sakibu and Clement stay with us through the Experts Lounge that's right after this. So if you want a really detailed answer, or maybe you want to talk about how to use this app in your own country or projects, that's the place to do it, I think. Um, so another question, can you talk a little bit more about the seasonal option that you have, that, that tick box where you say that you are able to make the calculation seasonal? Uh, you said that you took the last two years um, the same with the same last five months calculation. Wait, could you just explain that calculation a little bit more? Uh, okay, but for instance, let's say you are actually in November. Uh, if you want to calculate the uh, average monthly consumption for a product, we go back to the two last years uh, for the same period, and uh, we make uh, the submission of all the value consumed, and uh, we take the average of all the value consumed. For instance, for this November, we will take uh, October 28 plus uh, November 29 plus uh, December 29, plus a October 28, plus November 28, plus December 28. And then we have the average of the consumption of the two last years. 29 28. Okay. I think that that is, uh, yeah, a bit more clear uh thank you um how do you um monitor expirations of the stocks yeah you... yeah with the aggregate one the people have to say how many product we have. it is expired not we are not monitoring the product one by one they are set to really see that if uh, the time of expiration is come or not. So it is the user or uh, the, the, the person at the facility side who has to feel how many products is uh, expired. Is it clear? Uh, yeah, I think that is um, fine for me. Um, so I'm just looking through the questions if there's anything else. Um, one other question is how do you track the pack sizes? Is there a solution where the warehouse can have different pack sizes so that the facility doesn't have to specify? Um, and how do they know? So actually in our application, we are not dealing with that. Okay, that is something we are thinking about but actually we are not dealing with uh, the back uh, the backing okay that's fine mm -hmm. okay that's cool very clear all right any anyone else who has any last questions please type those quickly now um it looks like there are already some questions being piled up in the experts lounge. So uh, you guys will have plenty to talk about there, looks like. Um, uh, George, one last question. Is is there a demo website that we can look at? Do you have a demo instance where people can go in and, and look at the app? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, we didn't have it yet, but this one we just use, uh, we can make it available at the end of uh, this uh, workshop. So people can go there and uh, check uh, and get their feedback for us. 
it will be available by the end of this workshop. That's great to hear. Okay. All right. Um, one last question then, how customizable are the stock visualizations, the dashboards and th what you're presenting now? How customizable are these? Actually, yeah, so that is a good question. So actually, this dashboard is, is a fixed one. We are thinking uh, to add the way that the people can add their own dashboard. That is something uh, some countries requested. So for the next version, we are thinking about that. Of course, if not, there's still there, there is still the way that they can come to the DHS2 side also and deal with their own dashboard as the DHS do allow it. That is why we have this same view here. Thank you. Right. And then one last question is, um, does this work in warehouses? Is this tool being used in any warehouse settings? Uh, I explained that uh, with uh, the application, you can uh, enter the data or you can uh, manage the data at uh, each level of uh, the HS2. That means that uh, if in the countries they have another LMIS application they are very, very using, what they can do is to make an interoperability task with uh, the application so you can share the stuff of it. Between, between them. They actually, since we are not taking off all, all, all information based on uh, like tracking one product uh, based on their barcode. So it is uh, the country very ready to decide of that. Right, okay. I think that that was all we have time for, for the, for this session. Again, we have um, Sakibu, Clement, and maybe Adam, I don't know if you'll say online, uh, but staying in for the expert lounge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave Zoom open. We're gonna go ahead and leave Zoom open. Sakibu and um, Adam, you're now co host so you're able to, to control Zoom. Um, and, um, and I think a few of us will have to drop off. But I just want to thank you again very much, the three of you, for your presentation. Very, really great to see. It's it's amazing to see the kinds of innovations that are happening in DHIS2 and, and how you're you're close to the problems and you're able to to develop new solutions to solve those problems. Um, so uh, yeah, it looks like you'll have a very busy expert lounge. So thank you for, again for volunteering for that as well. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we will end today's session. If you want to stay on the line, continue talking to uh, Sakibu, Clement, and Adam. You're more than welcome to do that. Uh, keep posting your questions to the expert lounge, and they will go and be able to answer them there. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Alice.